guys, Templar here, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the cleaver. Now, when I mean cleaver, I'm not talking about a butcher's tool, I'm talking about the medieval cleaver. Now, when we think of medieval cleavers, we normally don't think of them as a medieval battlefield weapon. But here's the thing about the medieval cleaver. Medieval cleavers were actually used by many foot soldiers during the medieval age. From a very lonely peasant soldier to pretty much a very, uh, pretty much hardcore mercenary. The reason why cleavers were first used in the first place was because they were cheap. Plus, pretty much the time they first arrived on a battlefield was stated to have been sometime before or after the Battle of Hastings and first used by Norman soldiers. Now, it is stated that these type of weapons were extremely dangerous for a reason. These technically broke the body underneath the armor, meaning it doesn't matter if you're wearing, say, a steel helmet, chainmail, padded armor, or including any form of plate. This sword could technically break bone. In fact, say, for example, I got hit in the head by one of these weapons, which, actually, I come to think of it, I did once or twice when I was a reenactor, in which this blow ended up nearly making me unconscious for a while, and technically that thing was blunted. A sharpened one could probably kill a guy. Now, you guys probably don't understand the dangers of a cleaver. Medieval cleavers are extremely dangerous. One blow from these weapons, and you can actually have your neck broken. It's actually even estimated that these weapons lasted from the uh, high medieval age to the end of some parts of the Renaissance, though a lot of times it later on evolved into the machete, as some people state. Though a lot of people even state it actually still lasted up into the colonial age and sometime in the imperial age, with some foot soldiers such as the imperial military, such as of uh, say uh, England or France still using them. But still, the weapon was probably the last seen during World War I. We still don't know if that's true or not, but i rather just avoid all those in general and just stay with the medieval type cleaver. Now, when we think of medieval cleavers, as I stated, it's imperative to know the differences. Now, we can actually see the one of these cleavers in a Hollywood movie, such as the movie Robin Hood. Uh, with Russell Crowe. If you guys haven't seen it, I advise you guys, because you can probably see it in only one scene, and that is the fir first fighting scene, such as when, uh, well, King Richard's taking a castle, and you see Robin Hood for the first time on there. You can technically make out the small semblant, uh, resemblance of a handle that looks like an umbrella. That's the umbrella handle cleaver. Now, the umbrella handle cleaver was technically a multi-handed type of cleaver. In other words, you can use it with one hand or with two. Two hands would technically be used only if you were technically going up against a guy that was using a shield or had good armor. In other words, if, say for example, if he had a shield, I would use a cleaver like so, with a downward cut, chop down, and in the process it could actually break his forearm so badly that it could actually cause him not to use the, his shield in the process. In other words, he's fighting with one hand, and I can then finish him off. You can see why mercenaries love this weapon. I, personally, myself, am going to probably get myself my hands on one of those. But as well, cleavers did have this type of role. In fact, there are different types of cleavers throughout history, such as the one-handed cleavers that you see in uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, which, eh, here and there, with it, I'm kind of wanting to see if that one will work. But as well, you can even see cleavers even in the movie Braveheart with the Scots. Uh, which is kind of, I know it's unhistorically accurate, but still, cleavers were used at that time. Now though, when we think of cle another forms of cleavers, such as the umbrella cleaver. This is actually the cool part about the umbrella cleaver. It's a copy-off design of a falcata. If you guys don't realize the reason it's a copy-off, it's because of that umbrella handle. Now, it, it's true, it doesn't have the same handle-type uh, shape as a falcata, but it does have the handle. Meaning, if, say, if it gets stuck in something, I can easily pull it out. And in doing so, I can 
well, you get the point. That's why the umbrella cleaver is probably my favorite type of cleaver in history. Now, cleavers are pretty much dangerous, as I advise you guys. In fact, if someone comes at you with a cleaver, it's even if you're wearing good protection of armor, it's imperative that you take whatever adv advantage against the guy. If he's lightly armored, use something to kill him. <laughs> but pretty much, though, that's the thing. When we think of the cleaver, it's imperative that it was always known as the poor knight sword or a poor foot soldier sword, as it's known as. Well, that's actually both true and not true, because by the time of the very late medieval age, a lot of people were using the cleaver rather than an arming sword or a great sword. Pretty much because it was cheaper, it was pretty much, it, technically the reason why, it was cheaper to manufacture, and plus, there were hundreds of them. Because reason, you technically just ask a blacksmith to hammer <laughs> a just elongated form of steel. And doing so, this thing just looks like, well, a cleaver. That's why pretty much a lot of people during the medieval times didn't want it to as a weapon, but seeing as though it was a great weapon, people then started to go with it. Now, the cool part about this the cleaver is that you had two, ver two sides. You had your cutting side, and then you had your armor damaging side. In other words, uh, the, the cutting side would actually be sharpened, fully sharpened, to the tip. In other words, you could technically damage plate armor with it, as long as it hits the tip end. And the back end would have a blow type edge. In other words, say like a mace type, almost. Or kind of like spikes or something. Uh, like decoration, almost. And in doing so, this type of edge would actually be used on helmets, on, well, anything that's in plate. Foot soldiers love these things, and in fact, these things would have actually lasted a long time, but changed over the, over the years. I myself have never owned one, but I pro probably plan on buying one soon. Just to show you guys of how damaging this is to a guy that's wearing, a person that's wearing a, say, gambeson. Or as well, if, uh, I'll probably even use it against plate armor soon, probably. Just to show you guys how dangerous it is, even if you're wearing plate armor, such as a breastplate, you can actually, in the process, get your chest ended up dented in. In fact, this is probably why we see... Uh, medieval type plate armor have a protruded belly type of armor. In other words, that way not just to stop a lance from killing you or an arrow from killing you, but as well to stop the blow of this weapon. So, yeah, you can see why this weapon was probably perfect. But as I keep stating, guys, these weapons were meant for foot soldiers mostly. Until the very late medieval age, so yeah. But yeah, it's kind of understood that a knight wouldn't want to buy a cleaver because it kind of looks a little stupid. But still, it is a good weapon. Now as well, as I stated, these were used in the Crusades and as well used by the Scots, the Irish, and so on. But where did it originate from? Well, that part we don't know. A lot of people say um, maybe it would evolve from the Normans, from foot soldiers who had to have a type of weapon. Well, I would want to say that, but at the same time, I probably had to say no. What I had to say, it might have been a broken off sword, or as in this case, a or maybe even a butcher would have actually had a cleaver and used it in order to defend himself. So, yeah, you kind of have to expect that part. But the cool part is also about this weapon is that it wasn't meant for thrusting, yet you can use the tips of the corners as a type of thrust if you use it in an angle. In doing so, that could actually really damage the human body. But as well, the really gruesome part about this weapon is not with its thrust, not with it. Well, technically, maybe a little forms of uh, damaging the body underneath armor, but yeah, that's one thing. But as well, when it came for a cutting blow. Even if you're wearing padded armor, which 
don't get me wrong, padded armor is extremely good armor. But the thing is, if you get hit by this thing with just padded armor alone, it stated it might have cut off your hand. For example, say I'm like reaching up my arm like this in order to defend myself against this weapon. In doing so, that person might have actually in the process cut through the gamson into my forearm, into my arm here, and in the process, I could have lost his hand. In fact, it might have been just dangling by a, just the threads of cotton or threads of meat. So, <laughs> that's kind of terrifying. In fact, if you get here in the collarbone, I could ease in the process, have my collarbone broken, and as well a couple of ribs broken, or as well, he could have cut right into my head. This is why this weapon was extremely dangerous. If you guys love cleavers, not a fan of cleavers, I advise you guys to buy one just to see how badass these things were. In fact, foot soldiers love these. If you guys are reenactors, it'd probably be perfect for if you're like a mercenary or a poor foot soldier. So, just buy a blunted version. But still, guys, be a little careful because these things are extremely dangerous when you get hit. Because it's actually estimated that a medieval knight at the Battle of Agincourt actually had got his head split open by a medieval archer of the English longbowmen who used this on him, cracking open his skull and hitting, first upon hitting him on a uh, estimated 14 gauge steel helmet, which cut right in and killed him in the process. As well as the Battle of Visby, or Visby, whatever you want to pronounce it as, it's even stated that these weapons might have been used both on and for the soldiers that defended the area. Though we still don't know, because these weapons were used throughout Europe, most of the time Western Europe, because pretty much we saw it probably first arrived by the Normans, as I stated, and later on expanded from France and into the Holy Roman Empire, the British Isles, uh, Dan uh, Denmark, um, pretty much Italy maybe, but that might have been just as far. So yeah, in fact, the farthest east it might have gone might have actually been to the Middle East and that would have been eh, pretty much farther. But still, this weapon was extremely dangerous, so I advise you guys to not use it on human beings unless someone attacks you in your own house. But yeah, these weapons are pretty much very dangerous weapons, and even if blunted, as I stated before, are extremely dangerous. These weapons are a very dangerous commodity in types of areas. So, if you guys don't realize why these weapons are extremely dangerous, well, you probably don't understand the name Cleaver for a reason. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys want me to talk about any weapon in history, also let me know down in the comments below and I'll get right to it. Also, if you guys also want me to do any types of historical test cuttings very soon, also let me know. Uh, please subscribe for more and so you guys can actually keep up with this channel and help the channel grow. Anyways guys, thank you for watching and have a good day.